It's time for the Clan Scurvy to attack from distance and in today's video I'm going to be painting the long range attacks of the Warlock Engineer and the Warplock Giselles. It only made sense to paint both these units at the same time, but both units are the long range shooters of the army. By now we all know the colours of the Clan Scurvy, so I started off by basing them with Aberlin Sunset. The engineers were then painted with Bugman's Glow for the skin and Kislev Flesh was used for the Giselles. With the engineer being the older and wiser of the bunch, I used Administratum Grey for his fur and I used Baneblade Brown on the younger Giselle rats. I wanted two different wood colours on the guns. The engineer's gun was painted with a lighter Baneblade Brown, with the Giselle's guns being painted with a darker Gotor Brown. Various parts of both units were then based with lead belcher and I used rune lord brass on the tanks on their backs and other parts. Both units had some leather parts like the engineers arm, belt and pouches but the Giselles had extra ones with the straps over their shoulders. You might have noticed that I'm using a different type of brush from what I usually use and don't worry this isn't a sponsor spot but I'm not really a brush guy. Over the years I've built a collection of brushes and none of them were expensive. Whatever has a good point, I use it until it's beyond usable. And that's what happened just recently. So when looking through my brushes, I found this pack that came with a team you order. I think they were 3 euro or something like that. So I said I'd give them a go and it's the first time that I've used a brush with longer bristles. It took a little while to get used to, so edge highlighting might look a bit chunkier in parts, but it works really well and I really like using them. It stops me from adding paint to the base of the bristles, which is a pain to get out and can mean the end of a brush. So if you're not using one with longer bristles, get a cheap one like I did and give it a go. But back to the painting, and there were just a small few parts left to do like the skull on the engineer's gun, teeth and nails were done with screaming skull, the wraps with batter brown and some rope parts were then done with carrick stone. With all the base coats finished, it was time for shading, and as usual I used Seraphim Sepia to shade down the clothes. All the shades I use are slightly watered down with Lamb and Medium. I add Lamb and Medium to a dropper bottle, because I usually only use a drop or two when mixing. The skin was next, and I used Reichland Flesh Shade on the Engineer, and Contrast Paint Gulliman Flesh on the Giselles. Then I used Skeleton Horde on the Giselle's brown fur and I went with Null and Oil for the Engineer's grey fur. Sticking with Null and Oil, I used it to shade down all the silver parts and the leather. For the wood, wraps, teeth, bronze and skull, I went with Agrax Earthshade. I wanted to try a bit of a weathered aging look on the Engineer's gun, so I added a little bit of Bealtang Green onto it. Up next was highlighting and I used Uriel Yellow on the clothes and I love how Uriel Yellow looks on Avalon Sunset. It's one of my favourite colour combos. When painting skin, I have to keep reminding myself to just highlight the very edges. Don't go overdoing it. With that said, I used Rackart Flesh on the Engineer and went back to Kislev Flesh for the Giselles. The fur was then highlighted with Dawnstone on the grey fur and Balor Brown on the brown fur. With the Balor Brown still on the wet palette, I used it then to highlight the skulls, but for the wood, I'm going to dry brush it on. When I dry brush, I find that brushing it on my hand gives you a good indication of what's left on the brush. You're just going to have to go around with a dry brush hand by the end of every painting session. The final highlight was then to add Scrag Brown onto the edges of the leather parts. For all the metal parts then, I used Stormhole Silver to brighten them back up. For the pipes connected to the guns, I based them with Corax White and then gave them two layers of Tesseract Glow. Sometimes it can be a bit patchy looking, so you might have to add a third if needed. There was a small part on the engineer that I was a bit weary about doing, and this is the lens on this telescope thing. I started with Ultramarine's Contrast to see what it was going to turn out like, but it came out dark blue, and then I knew that there was no really easy way of doing this. So I went to a rust grey and I painted about 3 quarters of the lens in a curved shape. This is tinned down so I added 2 tin layers on it. Then I did the same with Calgar blue but more towards the end of the lens and leaving some rust grey on the other end. I continued this 2 more times but each time I added a small amount of white scar. 
Then I added a small dot of white scar onto the ultramarine's blue to make it look like a reflecting light. To finish it off, I add some gloss all over the lens. Not too shabby for a first time try. I really wanted to do something different with the Giselle's bases. While the rest of the army is charging onto the beach shores, these guys hang back on the ship and take shots from afar. I start off by raiding my balsa wood box and I have some skinny strips that I have lined up and I stuck onto the base with some PVA glue. I then clipped around to make the shape of the base and I start scraping the knife along the edges. Then I started to ruffle up a bit by making some dents and holes with my clippers. To really give it that well used look, I then use my knife and I start cutting across in all different directions. When finished, I add some more PVA glue to straighten the balsa wood. When dry, I added some patches of sand on parts of the wood scattered across. After giving it a base spray of white, I wanted it to have a well worn look, so I went with two layers of skeleton hoard. The finishing touch was then a dry brush of Screaming Skull all over. I've been waiting a long time for some new Giselle models and with the Skaventide box we finally got some and even a Warlock Engineer with a long range gun. I really like painting these models and hopefully this video will help you guys with your Skaven painting. But if you like this video make sure to let me know in the comment section below, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't and once again thanks for watching.